Since Saturday, when a jury announced it was deadlocked on a first-degree murder charge against Florida software developer Michael Dunn, the question so many have asked is, what happened? Yes, Dunn was convicted of three counts of attempted murder for firing at a car with four teens inside after an argument over loud music. But on the most serious charge, alleging the murder of 17-year-old Jordan Davis, the jurors could not agree. Tonight, in an ABC News exclusive, we know why. ABC's Byron Pitts has just finished the very first interview with one of those jurors for our series, Crime and Punishment. Do you think Michael Dunn got away with murder? At this point, um, I, I do, myself, personally, yes. She was juror number four. Valerie is her first name. Home care nurse administrator, she asked we not give her full name. For the first time tonight, we're hearing what happened inside the deadlock jury room, where 12 people struggled to decide the fate of admitted killer Michael Dunn. When you went to the deliberating room, you thought Michael Dunn was guilty? Yes, sir. Of killing a 17-year-old boy? Yes, sir. What convinced you of that? To me, it was unnecessary. You didn't think Michael Dunn had to kill Jordan Davis? I don't believe so. Most of the jurors, she told us, agreed with her. You all first took your first poll on guilt or innocence mm -hmm. on the murder of uh, Jordan Davis. What was the vote? Ten to two. Ten people thinking he was guilty? Yes, sir. And two said? Self-defense. 47-year-old Michael Dunn never denied he shot and killed 17-year-old Jordan Davis. But from the witness stand, he pleaded it was self-defense, reenacting for the jurors those last fateful moments. And I said, you're not going to kill me, you son of a bitch, and I shot the sounds of gunshots were captured on the store's surveillance camera. Oh my God, somebody's shooting. Somebody's shooting out of their car. Dunn eventually pulled away. In town for a wedding, he drove back to his hotel and ordered pizza. Mr. Dunn, the reason you left the gas station is because you knew you had shot into a car of four unarmed teenagers. That's incorrect. During his testimony, Dunn says he was sitting in his car, waiting on his fiance who had gone inside the store. There were four teenagers in an SUV parked next to him, music blaring. He asked them to turn it down. My eardrums were vibrating. Okay. I mean, this was ridiculously loud music. What did you make of Dunn asking the boys to turn their music down? Some of uh, jurors said, you know, he even mentioned, I've done it multiple times in my hometown, asked folks to turn down their music, and they did it. And that's where we saw a little bit of the ego. Initially, the music was turned down and then turned up again. An argument started. Dunn claimed 17-year-old Davis verbally threatened him and was about to get out of the SUV. I hear, I should kill that here. I should kill that Now he's screaming. Dunn insisted he saw what looked like a gun, though police never recovered one in the vehicle or in the area. And the teenagers who survived have always maintained there was no gun. When he says, yeah, I'm going to kill you, I look and I'm looking at a barrel. He's, he's showing me a gun and he's threatening me. But after he opened the door, then he looked at me and said, you're dead. At that point, what did you believe was about to happen to you? I, I thought I was going to be killed. Valerie says that was a key moment in the trial. Dunn's insistence he believed he was in danger. That in this final directive from the defense attorney. Check page 25. Start with page 25. Page 25 reads, The use of deadly force is justifiable if Michael Dunn reasonably believes that the force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm. And we took a poll. There were two of us undecided, two, four um, was justified, and the rest were not justified. Why were you and the others so convinced that Dunn was guilty? We all believe that there was another way out, another option. What about the testimony of his fiance, Rhonda Rohr, about what he thought about the music they were playing? That was a big deal for me because he testified he wouldn't say or use the words um, thug, but he said he would use the words rap crap. However, in his uh, interview, he did say thug a few times. Dunn's fiance, Rhonda Rauer, was grilled by the prosecution. And what did the defendant say? Oh, I hate that thug music. Did the defendant ever tell you that he saw the boys with a firearm? No. Did he ever tell you that he saw the boys with a weapon? No. The jurors deliberated for nearly 30 hours. There were reports that there was yelling heard coming from the deliberation room. Uh, what was, was that about? You did yes. some of the yelling. Yes. At one point, we were all trying to get our point across. Screaming? Oh, yes, sir. Profanity? Oh, yes, sir. People were passionate about their position. Oh, yes, sir. 
What started out on day one as a 10-2 vote in favor of convicting Michael Dunn of murdering Jordan Davis ended 9-3. to It had to be unanimous, a mistrial on that count. The jury did find Dunn guilty of attempted murder for shooting at the other teenagers in the car. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of attempted second-degree murder. How could you all convict Michael Dunn of attempting to kill the other teenagers in the car but not convict him of killing the 17-year-old? And that is pretty much my sole purpose for being here because reading the social media and people looking at us like we didn't do a justice or a service. We had a lot of discussion on him getting out of the car. Um, the threat is now gone and your intent is yet to still go ahead and pursue this vehicle. So for you all, a dividing line was when he initially fired into the car, thinking that there was a weapon, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But when the car pulled away and he kept shooting, yes. you all thought, everyone thought he crossed a the line there. Yes, and that's the exact words we use. For, for a lot of folk in America, they would say, um, white man shoots and kills a 17-year-old black boy. How could it not be? about race on some level. Sitting in that room, it was never presented that way. We looked at it as a bad situation where teenagers were together and words were spoken and lines were crossed. The jury was made up of eight whites, two blacks, a Hispanic, and an Asian. Jordan Davis's parents will likely watch this interview. What would you say to them? I would say I am sorry, of course. Nothing will bring back their son. I hope that they feel that we didn't do them a disservice. Michael Dunn could well spend the rest of his life in prison. Jordan Davis's parents will have a lifetime to grieve. As for Valerie and the other jurors, life resumes, though never quite the same. You think Michael Dunn had options? Oh, yes, sir. What were his options, you think? Uh, roll your window up. Ignore the taunting. Put your car in reverse, back up to the front of the store, move a parking spot over. That's my feeling. For Nightline, I'm Byron <laughs> Pitts you. in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah,